Electrify America, North America's largest network of high-speed DC fast chargers for electric vehicles, well, outside of Tesla's supercharger network, has just started a pilot program that's aim is to prevent customers from being able to fully charge their electric vehicle. They set a cap at 85% state of charge. You're not allowed to charge beyond 85% at these locations in the pilot program. Now, I know the knee-jerk reaction for many people may be to say, here's another example of a large company taking advantage of its customers, making the user experience problematic, but I'm taking a different angle at this. I actually like what Electrify America is doing, and I think they're doing it to actually improve the customer experience. Let's get into it. Okay, so this program is called Electrify America's Congestion Reduction Pilot. So from the name, you would arrive to the conclusion that there's too much congestion at certain locations. So Electrify America is trying to get creative to alleviate that congestion. And I do believe that's the root issue here. There are some locations that have very high utilization. There's queues, there's lines. Uh, there's some here in New Jersey that I know if I go there, there's a good chance that I may have to wait a little bit before I can plug in, but not many of the sites here in New Jersey. In California, it's a little bit different. There's a lot more electric vehicles in California and queuing up before you can plug in is becoming a problem in a lot of locations. Even there's plenty of Tesla superchargers, even though Tesla has tons of them that have long wait times almost every time you arrive. And that's tarnishing the whole electric vehicle ownership experience. So what Electrify America has done is they've identified 10 locations that seem to have uh, specific problems with this. The fact that there's extremely high utilization, people are queuing up, people are sending them complaints, and uh, they are trying to figure out how do, how do we alleviate this? Well, the, the easiest thing to do is double the amount of plugs at each location, but that <laughs> involves a, a very large capital investment. And I know that Electrify America is continuously expanding their network, but I haven't really seen them expand existing locations as much as I wish they had to this point. So um, barring that, uh, the other way to do it is to get more throughput on the existing sites, stations. So how do you do that? Uh, well, uh, you cap how long people can stay at the station or how high they can charge their electric vehicle, to what state of charge. You could, uh, they could do it one of two ways. They could say you get half an hour on the station and that's it, or you can charge to a set percentage, which is what they elected to do. And I think that's the better of the two solutions uh, because it's not fair for people that their electric vehicles charge slower and the less expensive electric vehicles typically charge slower, uh, they would only get a set time. They wouldn't get as much energy as the more expensive electric vehicles that have uh, higher charging speeds. So they elected to say, okay, in these 10 uh, locations, at 85% state of charge, the charger is gonna shut off and it will not dispense any more energy to your vehicle. Even if you unplug and try to plug it back in, you're not going to get any more uh, electricity. Uh, and the real reason they selected 85% was because as electric vehicles reach higher state of charge, they charge slower. All of them do. They all have different rates of which they slow their charging speed down. Some electric vehicles start to taper off and charge slower at 30 or 40%. Some hold a high state of charge to 70, 75%, but they all slow down after about 80, 85% state of charge. And that's why Electrify America picked this, uh, this specific state of charge. Uh, that's because in some electric vehicles, it actually takes longer to charge from 80% to 100% than it does from 10% to 80%. Imagine that you could fill up 70% of the battery in a shorter period of time 
then you can fill the final 20% of the battery. So that's where you want to eliminate. That's the time that you want to eliminate to try to get more throughput uh, through the station. Now the cynic will say, well, Electrify America just wants to make more money because they're um, during that, say, 45 minutes where the customer is getting only 20% state of charge, they're only paying for 20% of their battery. If we kick them off at 85% and get somebody else on there that's charging at a higher speed, we're going to get more dollars per minute than we would have if we let these people charge to 100%. So that, that's what the cynic says. And I'm sure there's a little bit of truth to that, but I do believe this was done to try to get more throughput and reduce the wait times uh, at, at these sites. And they picked these 10 locations strategically because they're locations that, number one, have very high utilization, number two, have long wait times, and number three, this is very important, that there are other charging stations sort of nearby. You wouldn't want to do this at a charger that it's the only site, say, for, you know, 150 miles because the customer that pulls up might need to charge to 100% to get to that next charger. So it's really important, and I know Electrify America strategically chose these stations based on location in addition to the utilization rate. So let's take a quick look at what Electrify America says on their website about this new pilot program. The Congestion Reduction Pilot. At Electrify America, we're committed to delivering a positive charging experience for every driver. As we explore strategies to reduce wait times and increase throughput across our network, we've launched a pilot that enforces a state of charge limit at select locations. Once a vehicle reaches 85% state of charge, the charging session will automatically end and the drivers will have 10 minutes to move their vehicle before idle fees are incurred. That 10 minute uh, period, by the way, is normal for Electrify America. This isn't something new. If you were to fully charge your vehicle to 100% and leave it there for more than 10 minutes, you start to incur their idle feeds, which is 40 cents per minute. And it further goes on to say, inspired by our customers' feedback, this pilot will be conducted across the stations listed below our team will continuously monitor station performance and customer sentiment during this pilot program and adjust as needed. And then it lists the pilot stations that are included in this. There's Plaza del Sol on Sherman Way in Burbank, California. The Target at West Sepulveda. I'm not good at pronouncing names. Carlson, California. Ralph's 060 at East Colorado Street in Glendale, the Bank of America, Washington Centinella Station and West Washington Boulevard, the Bank of America, LA Chinatown on North Broadway in LA, Vons on Foothill Boulevard in La Crescenta, California, Walmart on Murphy Canyon Road in San Diego, the Target on West Arrow Highway in San Dimas, at Target, at Raymore Street in Van Nuys, and Yorba Canyon Center on Yorba Linda Boulevard in Yorba Linda, California. All right, so those are the 10 stations that are currently in this pilot program. But make no mistake about it, if this goes as Electrify America hopes it goes, and they get a lot more throughput through, and they don't get too many complaints, uh, I think we can expect to see this expanded across the Electrify America network, barring those sites that have uh, long distances and the sites that have very low utilization. There'd be no reason to do this on sites that have very low utilization. You know, I've talked about the problem that we face with some people charging to 100% at DC fast chargers many times here on State of Charge and on my uh, Batteries Included podcast and on Inside EVs, what happens is, as I mentioned earlier, the vehicles take a very long time to charge from 80% to 100%. Uh, possibly doubling the entire charging session. And when people are waiting to charge when they're on a long road trip, it's really unnecessary for people to have to charge to 100% unless they absolutely have to. Uh, so I think this is actually a good policy. I think Electrify America could tweak it a little bit and maybe say, 
you know, during the hours of midnight to 6 a.m., this policy isn't in effect. If you want to roll up at 2 o'clock in the morning and plug in uh, and, and sit there for a couple of hours, have at it. Uh, unless those stations have high utilization overnight, I don't think that's the case for most stations. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm a supporter of this. I think it's a good policy. Uh, if the, you're on a long road trip and maybe you, you, you really wanted to charge to 100% so you don't have to make another stop, the fact of the matter is, it will take you less time if you charge to say 70%, got off, drove 100 miles, pulled into another station, provided there's another one along your route, and then just charged another 30%. Uh, it will take you less time. We've proven that. My good friend Kyle Connor from Outer Spec, he does these um, race to Vegas and all kind of long road trips, and he's proven that you get to your destination much faster if you make short multiple stops, then one big long stop and stay charging to 100%. You could actually cut a lot of time off, off your, your road trip just by charging in the ideal uh, charging segment of your vehicle. But in any event, you know, I, I know people are not gonna like this, some people at least. I think the people that really kind of understand charging might look at it and say, you know, this actually isn't a bad idea. Uh, I don't like being limited. I don't like this company that I'm giving my hard-earned money to to tell me, no, 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 no juice for you, 85% and that's it. But in some instances, and specifically some stations that have super high utilization and people are waiting, you might end up, this policy could really get a lot more vehicles through that those sites in a course of a day in a shorter period of time. And I'd love to see Electrify America publish data on that. Like in the past, before we uh, inst installed this policy, we had 45 cars were able to charge between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. at these sites on average. And now we have 85 vehicles charging. And uh, that makes a big difference. And if you're on a road trip, uh, that might make the difference between you waiting an hour before you can plug in and maybe waiting 10 or 15 minutes before you can plug in because the vehicles are, are turning over a lot faster. I'm sure this is going to be a topic that um, a lot of people want to talk about. And I, I encourage people to get a lively discussion in the comment section of the video. But the last thing I want to just talk about is the difference between AC charging and DC fast fast charging. We're talking about DC fast chargers here. And uh, as I mentioned, the charging dramatically slows down at higher states of charge for your vehicle. If you plug in at a very low state of charge, you can pull the maximum power that your electric vehicle can accept. Uh, how long it draws that maximum power depends on the specific charging curve of your electric vehicle. All EVs charge slightly differently. Some hold maximum power for a long time, some for a little bit of a time, and then gradually trickle down. Um, and that's DC fast charging. But for AC charging, which you see behind me, the AC chargers on the wall are home charging, but there's also public AC chargers. Uh, it's a little different. It's actually very different. The charging curve is relatively flat. You plug in and you get the most amount of power that the charger can put out and the vehicle can accept up until about 96, 97, sometimes 99%. And that's when the charging rate slows down a little bit to balance out all the battery cells. Whereas with DC fast charging, by 80 or 85%, virtually every electric vehicle is, is charging at a much lower rate than what it was initially when you plugged in at a lower state of charge. AC charging is different. I just wanted to put that qualifier out there in case people were wondering if this would apply to uh, AC chargers as well as DC chargers if the charging curve changes. Really doesn't with AC charging. This is really specific to DC fast charging and that's when you see the charging rate drop off so much once you get above 75, 80%. Uh, I like this policy. Uh, this is something that I can get behind and support with Electrify America. Again, as long as it's not overused and as long as it's not in locations where some EVs can't make it to that next charging uh, station. But in urban areas and places like in California where they have uh, another Electrify America site just 10 miles away, uh, I'm all for it. And uh, I hope and I expect this policy to spread throughout many chargers on the Electrify America network. Right now, there's 10 out of the hundreds of uh, sites that Electrify America operates. I wouldn't be surprised if in a year or two, 
a third of Electrify America's sites have a policy similar to this. And I can get behind it because quite honestly, when it comes to DC fast charging, I don't believe people should be charging beyond 85% uh, unless they absolutely need to and it's a road trip and you need to make that next charger. Uh, it's, it's not even good for your battery to DC fast charge above 85%. You should be taking in lower power. It actually is, is, is better for your battery at high states of charge to be accepting less power. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. So let's get a lively discussion in the comment section below. And uh, listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.